are talking about everyone's favorite subject today, trades. The NFL trade, de- trade, blah, blah, blah. trade deadline is rapidly approaching Tuesday, October 31st. So we're going to check out two players that have been linked to the Atlanta Falcons and that Terry Fontenot might be doing some homework on. But before we do all that, make sure to subscribe to our channel before the trade deadline. That way, if any moves go down at the 11th hour, you are not in the dark. So hit that sub button down below and help us reach our next milestone, 16,000 subscribers. All right, the first guy we're going to talk about on today's show is the Jets defensive end, Carl Lawson. So he has been rumored to be available for a trade, and CBS actually linked the Falcons to Lawson. A Atlanta area native, grew up in Alpharetta, went to Milton High School, but he has not really found much of a home with the Jets lately. So the New York Jets defensive line has gone under a major revamp, and they have brought in a lot of new guys. They used their first-round pick on a defensive lineman this year. They used their first-round pick last year on a defensive lineman. So quickly, Carl Lawson has kind of lost a spot in this rotation. His snap counts are way down. He's not producing very much either, only three tackles this year. But he has been a productive player before. Like, look at his last uh, two seasons, seven sacks a year ago in year one with the Jets. 2020 is last year with the Bengals, five and a half sacks, five sacks before that. So he is a proven player. This is not a question about whether or not Carl Lawson is a good defensive end. We've seen him put up good numbers before. He's just not really finding a spot in the Jets' defensive line rotation which is why the New York Jets are interested in moving on from getting a draft pick for a guy that doesn't seem to have a future there for much longer. And they're not really sellers over there in New Jersey, but they're definitely not uh, buyers. So maybe they could get something for someone who's not doing a whole lot on their roster. And when we look at Atlanta's roster, and specifically their front five, they've got a good edge rushing rotation. Arnold Ebiketti, Bud Dupree, Calais Campbell, Lorenzo Carter. But that's all it is. Good. It could be better. It definitely could be worse. But for a team that is four and three that wants to make some moves and wants to go on a run, you should do better than good, right? You should strive to be better than just good. The Falcons are thin at edge rusher. So my biggest fear is, knock on wood, they are one injury away from very, very thin edge rusher rotation that doesn't have a clear number one alpha that can take over a game in the wild card round when Atlanta's defense needs a stop on third and four, right? But if you get Carl Lawson over there, well, not only are you going to get some depth, so maybe you get some extra sacks out of Carl Lawson, but you're also going to keep fresh legs, right? You're not going to be asking so much of this uh, current group to provide so much because Lawson can come in, he can give guys breathers, he can keep legs fresh, and he can help this edge rusher rotation be firing on all cylinders in the second half of the season. When I look at the four dominant edge rushers for this team, Campbell, Ebiketti, Bud Dupree, Lorenzo Carter, they're all having solid seasons, right? They're all having good years. But again, we keep finding ourselves back at that same word, good. And if you want to be great, if you want to win some playoff games, having your number one sack player just have two sacks is probably not going to cut it. But if you've got four or five guys with two to three sacks, like, you could put together a decent rotation that might be able to get the job done despite not having a number one 10-plus sack player. Now, like I said, CBS linked Atlanta to the Jets, and they had a very routine trade. Carl Lawson going back home for a 2024 six-round draft pick. I'm in, baby. But let me know, would you do this trade? Yes or no? Give me your opinion in the comment section. I want to know where you stand on Carl Lawson coming back to ATL, this edge rusher rotation getting a little bit deeper, and overall whether or not you're okay with parting with a six-round draft pick. If you if the Falcons do end up trading for Carl Lawson, I'm not asking him to come down to Atlanta and be an NFL Defensive Player of the Year candidate. No, I'm not asking for anything close to that, actually. I just need Atlanta to go into the trade deadline, find a guy, whether it's Lawson or another edge rusher that can come over, play the next 8, 9, 10 games, whatever it's at, and get three to four sacks. Get three to four sacks, join this rotation, join this committee, be a good group project member, and lighten the workload for Onyemata, Grady Jarrett, Campbell, like guys who are up there in the age column that are not spring chickens, 
so that when we get into December and January, they're not huffing and puffing on third and fourth down because Carl Lawson came over on Halloween and said, you know what? Take this first down off. I got this. Go get a rest. And that way this edge rushing rotation is a little bit fresher going into the postseason. We've got one more trade to talk about in just a moment, but today's show is being supported by Prize Picks. Prize Picks, ladies and gentlemen, is a daily fantasy sports app where all you have to do is pick more or less for two to six player stat projections, and you can win up to 25 times your money on any entry. Now, looking ahead at week eight, I like the more on CJ Stroud at 239 and a half passing yards against the Panthers' Swiss cheese defense. I also like more on Trevor Lawrence, 239.5 passing yards as well against the Steelers. They quietly suck, and everyone's going to find out after Trevor Lawrence carves them up. And then Brees Hall at 66.5 rushing yards seems criminally low, so I'm taking the more on that one as well. So go to prizepicks.com slash CLNS and use code CLNS for a first deposit match up to $100. The link for that, by the way, is in the comments and description of today's video. Prize picks, daily fantasy sports made easy. Be sure you check them out. Moving on to the second trade subject or trade candidate or target, I should say. Excuse me. So Jordan Schultz tweeted out that the Raiders and Hunter Renfro appear motivated to get a trade done. He's never been on the same page with Josh McDaniels, which, to be fair, I don't think anyone's on the same page as Josh McDaniels as Las Vegas attempts to find a suitor before the deadline. So I don't think it takes a rocket scientist to go, the Raiders are looking for a suitor. Oh, maybe Atlanta would be in the market for a wide receiver. Now, Hunter Renfro signed a two-year contract extension not long ago. He's got one more year on that extension past 2023 with a 2024 cap hit of $13.7 million. So Las Vegas is probably going to have a tough time finding a team willing to take on that cap hit next year for a guy that turns 28 years old in December, so still has some years left at, uh, in his prime, but he's not uh, you know, 23, 24 years old, and he's only got 73 yards to show for this year. 73 yards. Like when we first put that on screen, I was like, Jack, we got a typo. We got to fix things. Like, Dude, no, that's real. That, that's all he's done so far. So 333, 330 yards last year and two touchdowns after his breakout 1,000-yard season and nine touchdowns in 2021. When it comes to Hunter Renfro and as a potential trade target for Atlanta, the offense is passing way more than I anticipated. Like I thought Atlanta's ground game would be the complete backbone of this offense, and they would run it on first, second, and third down. But if you are going to pass as much as Atlanta has been passing lately, Desmond Ritter's averaging nearly 300 yards a game over the last three weeks, well, then you should invest in what you're already investing in, right? Spend money to make money. If you want to pass the ball, well, then go get some guys to pass to because Drake London's phenomenal. Drake London is him. He's awesome. But my fear is DBs are going to start watching film, and they're going to start to notice that's where the ball tends to go. And if they put two guys on Drake London – we might have a problem. Like when you look at Atlanta's leading receiver, Drake London leading the way, 383 yards. Jonu Smith and Kyle Pitts, your two tight ends, are two and three in the lineup. Bijan Robinson is batting fourth as leading receiver. Like there's only one wide receiver in the top four leading receivers for Atlanta. That could be a problem if teams start to zero in on those guys. Matt Collins next up as far as just wide receivers go with 12 grabs for 184 yards. And then there's a big fall off, right? Kaderil Hodge and Scotty Miller, they are just not made to be wide receivers three and four in the NFL. They are honestly just happy to be here at this point. So if Atlanta wants to continue to pass the football, well, then maybe go get some more wide receivers to pass the ball to. So how about this trade idea? This one is from yours truly. Hunter Renfro for a day three pick swap. I'm sure Raiders fans are not happy about that, but Atlanta would be doing the Raiders a huge favor, taking that contract off their books for a guy that has 73 yards so far in an offense that clearly has no role for him, but he has proven to be an effective wide receiver before. So I don't think this is too much of a question of, does Hunter Renfro suck? No, I think it's he probably got overpaid a little bit, and he's not in an offense that, that is designed to have a slot wide receiver. Meanwhile, Arthur Smith in Atlanta 
would love to have a true slot wide receiver. I also think you should look ahead here for a second. Who is on the roster for Atlanta in 2024 at the wide receiver position? There's just two guys, Drake London and Josh Ali. And I no offense to Josh Ali, he's not a guarantee to make that roster. So you have to look ahead a little bit when you start making these trades, right? you got to think one to two steps down the road. And Atlanta is probably looking at 2024 right now thinking, we only have one wide receiver on our roster. Maybe it's not the world's worst idea to go trade for a proven wide receiver, help out Desmond Ritter this year, but also go into 2024 not starting from scratch yet again and having a little bit of continuity at that position. So going back to the two trade ideas, though, that we talked about on today's show, which one do you like more? The Carl Lawson for a six-rounder or helping out the offense a little bit and bringing over Hunter Renfro for a day three pick swap? Let me know in the comment section which trade you like more. I'll be sure to go down and look afterwards. I appreciate everyone for tuning in to, into today's show. We're going to sign off and see everyone later. Thank you.